Hi everyone. So here is Moonlight Soul and my good friend Adrian Gibson from Just Kidding Astrology, and we got together to talk about the last lunation of this astrological year, no other than Pisces New Moon. Hello, Adrian. Nice to have Hello. you back. I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Coming off a of fast, so uh, yeah, I'm ready to start this uh, new moon cycle. Yeah, we, we culminating a lot, even <laughs> with our detox. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, and we were just chatting that this literally feels like this is it. This is the grand closing. This is the grand closing, yes. I definitely feel that. Um, lots of, as you'll see when I bring up the chart, lots of things in Pisces. Move, things getting ready to move into Aries. Um, a lot of things are culminating right now, and I imagine that everybody can feel it. Absolutely. And uh, today, as as we're recording this on Friday, uh, Mercury just conjuncted Neptune in Pisces. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the um, and uh, the culmination of a you know, a way of thinking, a perception of life. And, you know, things will begin, will begin the process of gathering new information here for this next cycle. And that's perfect, because as we will see on the chart, Mercury actually will be in a new phase to the Moon and Neptune, but already in Aries, because Mercury is shifting tomorrow on Saturday. So by the time this video comes up, Mercury will have already moved into the sign of Aries. So I think that's perfectly fitting exactly to what you just described. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shall I bring up the chart and we can yeah. Let's just show jump right in? Because <laughs> here I am trying to picture the chart in my head. <laughs> All right. There. Can you see that? Yep. Perfect. Yes. Waiting for that to disappear. Awesome. Okay. Well, so Sunday the 10th for this part of the world, Eastern Standard Time at 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, for me, it will be at 3 because you guys are actually moving the clock. You're changing the um, time. Yeah, you're going into the summer, the saving time, and Mexico no longer does that. So for me, it's at 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, that's good to know. For the next time that we do our report, that will be a couple of hours off. <laughs> yeah, and also it's going to be confusing for people in Europe because they're not changing the clock until the end of the month, until the last Sunday. <laughs> Oh, that's so strange, huh? Yeah, that's not how it's been. They usually yeah. change first. Well, there you go. This is the changes of the of the cycles. Wow. Yes. Well, so as we can see, everything is down there in a cluster. Everything is down in the cluster. It feels like there's a little backing up before we all, you know, come through the new shoot. And right. like you said, look, that Mercury um, is going to be at zero degrees Aries. So it's the beginning, you know, of uh, the planets moving through the shoot of Aries. And it won't be long and they'll all be piled in there. Exactly. This is the preview. And Mercury on the same day, actually, later on, will make a sextile to Pluto. So Mercury is the high five, you know, the first one since conjunction, like we going for it, you know, because the first sextile, I believe, is the Taurus, right? The Taurus quality. So it's like, yeah, okay. we going for what matters to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. Would you like to start today? Pick well, something. I feel... <laughs> like, you know, it's a, we need to give the due to Neptune as it is the ruler, the modern ruler of the Pisces new moon. And we can see it's right there in a new new phase conjunction because, of course, Sun is the center point. And actually, Sun and Neptune will have a conjunction uh, one week later on the yes. 17th, yes. right before Sun moves into the sign of Aries. So I feel this is so significant because with the Neptune being in a new phase to the, to the Pisces new moon, we literally are seeding a new meaning for us, a new spiritual meaning of uh, what it means to be a human, what it means to be a soul incarnate in a human body. And that's why I feel the Mercury, of course, had to be in Aries. 
Yeah, I think it's really interesting that um, I've uh, just recently been thinking about how this, you know, Pluto has been through the sign of Capricorn and we are literally working on completing that cycle. And I was thinking about how when we talk about Capricorn, we talk about the physical reality. Mm -hmm. But then when we talk about Pisces, we talk about some an illusion or a dream or an imagination. And it, it it occurs to me that really Capricorn is the illusion. It's the superimposed reality upon mm -hmm. this Piscean backdrop, right? And so it just seems like as uh, we complete off this cycle, we're really starting to bring this spiritual energy into this new dimension whereas before it was all very physical to the point where we're almost like separated from the spiritual aspect and so i feel like this is the beginning of an integration of the spiritual of the spiritual nature into humanity where you know it's it's we're waking up into that spiritual realm which i think is part of this energy of neptune and pisces and Saturn and Pisces, we're, we're <clears throat> beginning to place into the spiritual realm this um, this physical world that we're living in. And so I think it's very um, appropriate to be ending this cycle, the ending the old cycle and beginning a brand new cycle of transcendence, essentially, with this new moon. And... Um, and then, you know, the moon is culminating its cycle while the sun culminating its cycle with Neptune. But the sun is having a new, uh, is the, sorry, the Neptune is in a new phase to the sun. So it is just, it's, it's the ending of one part and the beginning of another, internal and then external, which is exciting to me. Just... Yeah, it's, it's so interesting that we have the moon squeezed right between the Saturn and the Neptune, just like what you started saying, the tangible and the intangible, and the moon is literally sandwiched between the two. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, and um, it, yeah, it, it's an interesting time, you know. The way that I've been looking at it is that um, this moving into Aquarius, we're breaking free from the old paradigm and we've been closing off this, all the energies of that old paradigm. You know, we're going to have Venus moving into Pisces very shortly and then Mars will also move into Pisces. And meanwhile, all the rest of the planets are going to start to file into this new phase and in uh, Aries, and we're really literally getting ready to start something new. And it's interesting that um, Mars and Mercury are at a closing phase to Saturn. And I was noticing that um, Jupiter is also at a closing phase to Uranus, that they're there's so much closing phase energy going on. We're we're like tying up the loose ends. And really, Mercury is the beginning. It's the first one that's stepping out into this new energy with the way that we perceive the world. That's the new energy, the new way of looking at reality. And then we'll start moving into <clears throat> um, what we value will be changing, you know, particularly because Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus, we'll, we'll be having changes with the perception that we're having, our beliefs about it, and then our values about it. All of these things are going to be changing um, to help seed this new journey into the future, which is so interesting that it's very important about the beliefs. What we believe to be true will be the reality that we are able to perceive. So. Yeah, and I mean, Jupiter will move into the Gemini <laughs> and then it's gonna it, be ruled by Mercury. 
Exactly. So I really feel that Mercury plays such an important role and also just as a reminder to everyone, because I keep mentioning this, when Mars became the ruler of the North Node, uh, Mars was in the sign of Virgo, ruled by Mercury. And also we entered this uh, calendar year, Gregorian calendar year, with Moon in the sign of Virgo, also ruled by Mercury. So Mercury has a huge role to play because, of course, even when we are children, this is how we connect with the world, the language, you know, what we learn, what we absorb as the program. So, and you and I were joking that literally this is the reset. This is the reset. Yes. This chart is the reset because this is literally what's happening. And we've already mentioned this in our previous conversations that in order to create this new reality, this new earth, uh, that we want to experience, we need to start seeing reality very differently. We need to adopt a different way of thinking, a different way of communicating, and different way of connecting to one another. And that's why it's no coincidence that Mercury is in Aries and on zero degrees, and it's sextile in Pluto as the first planet of the personal planet since the conjunction in Aquarius. So it's definitely... Um, very significant to pay attention to that because there is no other planet on zero degrees even pluto is already on one degree uh, mercury yep, is the yep. only one yeah and and it's sextile so this yeah. mercury this mercury at zero degrees aries is literally supporting this energy of aquarius yes we're not going to be able to break free from the pattern without changing our mindset and we are changing our mindset and and you know, we may be feeling the intensity of this sextile because, you know, it's it's not quite there. We've got one more degree to move and then it'll be an exact sextile. Yeah, so, and also Mercury is in a closing to the North Node. They're going to have the conjunction following like week later. And also Mercury will conjunct Chiron three times because of its retrograde. So yeah. this is where we really reevaluating and really looking at uh, what is preventing us from going into this new phase of our evolutionary journey. And, uh, you know, I really think that this um, moon being like moon itself without the sun being in a new phase to Saturn, but Saturn being in a closing phase to Pisces, it's it, it it is letting go of the of the external projection, because like you started uh, what you started with that Saturn is actually not real uh, rea it's not real it's, it's it's real for us in a three-dimensional reality but it's real because this is the projection of our inner world the the cancer and Saturn the the moon and the Saturn we, we our inner world is creating this reality the outside world is not creating us we already are the divine being but our inner world is projecting into the matrix and creating the human experience the three-dimensional reality and this is why it is so important for this to take place that we need to let go of this illusion <laughs> That it yeah, works yeah. outside in. No, it works inside out, but we need to start looking at it differently. This is why Mercury yes. is on the zero degrees. Yes. And I, I I truly believe that everything that has come before is purposeful. Like, yes, we're we're ending the cycle, but we learned something through this past journey, these, you know, eons of being within this 3D matrix. And as we begin to shift and grow into the next phase which is what i think is happening is that we're we're really coming into a whole different dimension of reality um chiron in the north node and chiron um mm -hmm. conjunct that um we're gonna have to culminate where we've been and this isn't this isn't easy there's gonna be a lot of emotional um you know, people attached to the way things are and and will feel probably a sense of loss, you know, and a mm -hmm. sense of um, sadness um, with the way things that are going. But then at the same time, there's probably an inner sense of excitement going on. Like I know for myself personally, I'm fe feeling very excited. It's almost like the feeling of, just like being in the gates to start a race or something like we're getting ready to start something. Um, and it's, 
it feels like excitement in my body. Um, but we are leaving this old paradigm and being able to step into this new one. And I think that that's really, um, I think that it is scary on one sense because we don't know what's happening whenever we get into Aries. It's, it can be uncomfortable because it's, um, it's unknown. We don't actually know what's coming for the future. Um, but we, uh, we've been doing the work. We've all been working on this emotional work and trying to let go of these past patterns. And, um, you know, the nodes have been in, um, Libra and Aries for quite a while now. And we've been working on the way we relate to the outer world with the intention of moving toward what our internal desires are, because it's almost like as we begin this Pluto through Aquarius, we're all going to, instead of all doing the same thing like we've been doing with South Node and Aries, we're all going to sort of spread out. Everybody's going to be doing their own thing. And <clears throat> that's really exciting. Uh, and I think that, I mean, <clears throat> I think that part of the, part of the reality will think that, oh, we, we won't get our needs met in that way. But if I feel like if all of us are doing what it is that we feel from the inside, all of the needs will get covered because mm -hmm. nobody has the same intentions. Nobody has the same goals, desires that, you know, there are some people that are going to want to grow food. There are some people that are going to want to, you know, study the different parts of the world and you know, all of the things that are necessary. And I think that if we trust in that, that um, the world can find harmony instead of all of us being forced into, you know, meaningless jobs and meaningless lifestyles, et cetera, <clears throat> which I think is part of the discontent with the past. Yeah, and also the disconnection from from the soul and from one another disconnection from our souls and from one another because the soul remembers that this is many incarnations where that was the goal that was the goal right to survive and actually just to backtrack to what you said like yes everything that ever taken place had its meaning and that was where the human collective consciousness was at it was the pisces age where uh we were the cluster <laughs> where we were being told we are all the same but uh through that um through that story, we were being made felt disempowered because actually, yes, we are all the same from the point of view, like, yeah, on a human level, you know, we are biologically designed very similarly. Of course, we have more connecting than separating us. But when in human incarnation, when the spirit breathes the life into the human body, we are a unique expression of the source. And this is what is the difference, because in Pisces age, that was the experience that the source wanted to have through which it evolved through us was that, OK, let's have an experience where we all feel that we all the same. But in a sense, it makes us feel um, lost and separate because uh, uh, because our true needs are not being met because we don't identify them because we were being put all in a box that okay we are all the same everybody needs to do this this is what everybody needs to survive and in essence that was what we needed to go through that was the experience we needed to have but I feel that that's why in this time and age so many people are becoming depressed about it because we already have the totality of understanding of that experience like yes this was what we wanted to experience prior, but now we're living in different time and now literally we are alive at the time when these things are shifting. And the shift is not so easy because we have the totality of understanding what was and almost zero, you know, Mercury on zero degrees, zero understanding of what is coming. So it's not so easy to make this shift and it requires this Aries qualities, which is the courage, bravery, and the desire for, you know, for adventure, right? Yes. And that's why we all have to go through our own inner process of identifying, well, what still holds a meaning that I can take with me and create something new with, and what do I need to release back to God or universe? 
because the energy needs to be in flow. So we cannot create something if the energy is attached to something else. We need to Absolutely. release it. We need to release it because it's the it's the recycling of the energy. So that's why I feel there is Saturn in a closing phase to this new moon because it's saying you have the totality of understanding of the structure and life and experience, the 3D, the matrix, of how things were so let's discern you know that's where the mercury quality comes in let's discern which one of these is still useful and serving us going forward and let let the rest go with love and peace compassion gratitude and forgiveness for the version of ourselves we needed to be to get us to this point and at the same time with the neptune in a new phase it's like because we see it in we find in a new meaning where yes we are coming back to wholeness, but becoming whole again, but we actually starting to show our individuation qualities, individual qualities, where, like you said, yes, we, we will be all different, but actually that's how we get our needs met, because there will be no lack mentality that, oh, we want all the same thing, but that's what was created by the Pisces age, thinking we all have to do the same thing. So it's like yes. a paradox, you know, we thought we were all the same, but it created like mentality, but actually through the unique expression of Aquarius, there is plenty for everyone because everybody perceives reality differently and not everybody wants to be a millionaire with swimming pool and a first, you know, like right. there are people who don't want that and it's fine, yes. you know, we were just being conditioned to think everybody wants exactly the same thing because exactly. this is what the society programmed into us that we all should want the same thing. Right. And I think that this is the importance of this <clears throat> Jupiter and Uranus closing phase. That these are a, this is a belief system that we've been following, and it is closing. And it's about how we survive in the world. And Uranus is saying, "Nope, it's time to break apart that pattern of survival. <clears throat> that there's there's another way." And this is what. Um, I mean, this is to me what Pluto in Aquarius is about is we're going to break free from that completely and we're going to learn a new way of survival. And I mean, I think that science has worked its way through with understanding what we need to survive, the, the whole idea with nutrition and people understand what we need to survive. We uh, can understand also now that you know, we can't pollute our environment and that we have to, you know, maintain and sort of, you know, sequester our resources so that they just don't get all used up and um, finding finding new ways to survive. Um, but it's all in this closing phase of Jupiter, Jupiter to Uranus, that we're, we're ending an old belief system and getting ready to literally start a new way of believing and it, it I'm, I'm not sure because i i haven't looked ahead of when your jupiter pa crosses over uranus but my guess is it's it, it'll be in the time that that whole jumble of planets moves through aries or very close to it well, they will have an exact conjunction on April 20th, but I checked my solar return, which is on April 25th. And I mean, my solar return, my, my birthday is 26th, but my solar return will be on April 25th because of my current location. And they still will be almost exactly conjunct. Literally, really? it will be like a one minute difference. So it will be around end of April, which is <laughs> full moon in Scorpio. <laughs> right after moon Scorpio and the eclipse. Right. Oh no, the eclipse will be earlier than that. That's the, the eclipses are uh, going to be done and dusted, which is even more prominent because by that point, uh, Venus will have conjunct nor uh, North Node. Mars still will be in a closing phase, but Venus will have conjunct North Node, and we know Venus is the rule of the resolution node. So that's why right. it will be important for us to have that awareness for the full moon in Scorpio and the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, both ruled by Venus. So this will be right, very important right. for us to have the illumination, I feel, of what actually is going on here and what is required. And I agree with, you know, like, uh, b because what I'm tapping into here is that what we invited to focus on uh, and 
tap into is the higher vibrations of the planets. So with the Taurus, for example, yes, it's about the survival on the basic animalistic level, but with regards to the higher frequencies and Uranus, I feel that we are here to focus on re-evaluation of, of the values. So it's like survival, but not just our animalistic survival, like as long as I have enough, then it's okay, I'll survive. But it's about survival as a species and thriving, going beyond the abundance. So I feel with this Mercury and uh, zero degrees Aries, it's like inviting us to step into the higher frequencies of the, each archetype and what they actually can offer to us. Yeah. Yes, actually. And I was just noticing that um, Venus in Aquarius is a repeated theme to Uranus and Taurus. Mm -hmm. And they're at a third quarter square. Yeah. So, which is linking it to Jupiter, where we're breaking free from this uh, beliefs about the way we've lived. And we're literally, it's happening in two places in the chart. So it's an important peace in what's coming for us we have to change our belief system um and uh really to me in order to do that it's about um j really just letting go and surrendering to the source and i think that that is what this whole you know huge stellium in pisces is about right now is that we're resetting and learning to align with source Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you think about it, Source has been there keeping humanity alive for <laughs> millions of years, so <laughs> we can trust it. <laughs> it's gonna keep. It, it'll go on with or without it'll, us. Yeah, <laughs> provided we don't take it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I don't think we allow that. That doesn't concern me at all. Like I know a lot of people have that uh, concern at the back of their mind, but we are part of. Um, you know how everything is connecting and everything impacts everything else. So uh, we cannot take one piece away because everything else will be affected. So we don't have that privilege. <laughs> we don't have the privilege right. to take Earth out of the equation just because of our level of immaturity, if we can put it that way. Right. And also, mm -hmm. it's interesting to notice that... Um, well, both Venus and Mars square Jupiter and uh, Uranus, and actually Mars is squaring Uranus only a day before. And this is interesting that we had the Venus square to Uranus exactly on a day of the uh, full moon in Virgo. And now we have Mars as the rule of the North Node square in Uranus. So I feel this is so important because of course Venus, yes, she has a mutual reception with Uranus and she rules Jupiter and Uranus, but she's the rule of the South Node. So this is the thing that we are trying to evolve so we can get into yes. this new direction. And now Mars as the rule is squaring and it's saying like, well, guys, we need to get beyond these traumas. You know, we need to get beyond these stories that made us frozen in time. So I feel that Mars, you know, especially because it's, it is like you mentioned, you know, they both Venus and Mars closing, closing square. This is the desire for release. So yes. it is really um, inevitable. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because that desire of release, I was noticing earlier when I was writing my report that there's a lot of connection being made to that 10th house cusp in Scorpio up there that there's, you know, like uh, this, uh, an idea of changing the way we have been living in the social realm, which I realize is not the case necessarily for everybody in the world. But um, it, it definitely is a factor here, particularly for the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like especially the people I've been doing readings uh, recently for is interesting because actually they have something similar going on to what you have going on in your personal chart with the Pluto trine in uh, your natal Pluto. So this is literally the time where you were born for. Like people, you know, you are the first... Uh, um, the first wave of volunteers, right? That's what Dolores Cannon called you. And uh, this is literally the times you were born for, you know? So that's why I feel that you you coming online, like you're becoming so excited about this because where's probably 
uh, you know, majority of your life, you felt like, well, I don't belong, you know, I don't fit in here. This world is weird. And now it's like that, that's the level of excitement. And, you know, it's the same for all, all of us scattered amongst all the generations that are potentially awake or awake to a higher degree that the, you know, the, um, the majority consciousness, uh, collective yeah, yeah. consciousness, and this is because uh, you know we somebody has to be preparing the 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 ground, right? And that's why I feel with these um, activations that are going on now, you know, with the uh, closing phases, new phases, and the final squares, because literally everything is either right at the at the end or right at the beginning. It's all closing squares, closing sextiles. Only in yes, case yes. of Mercury, he's the first one that is making the first the new sextile to Pluto, but everything else is like either closing, opening, or you know, somewhere there. But nothing is in opposition. You know, there is like we literally are. I mean, apart from Chiron and South Node, but we have, we are at the ends and beginnings of these cycles. And that's why I feel that people are really coming online. They really come in yeah. online because the cycles are ending and new cycles are uh, seeded at the same time. And this is the time. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean, I can feel it. So let's see, I'm trying to figure out what else. What else to talk about with this chart? Well, I mean, I think it's also interesting. Well, recently, you know, um, Mars made the sextile, the closing sextile to North Node and Chiron. So that's since the last lunation. And yes. again, this is the closing sextile and also Mars making a closing square to Uranus. So all these conjunctions will be happening at late spring and summer. Uh, and that that again is because Mars, uh, to me, is, I know Sagittarius is the one shooting the arrow, but to me, Mars is the pointer. <laughs> you know, Mars is the pointer because it's yeah, got the arrow. Absolutely. So I, I feel that Mars is pointing us once again to summertime. You know, that uh, all this energy, and I mean, of course, you know, Pisces full moon will not be until the actual eclipse, because Pisces full moon will be the eclipse, the first one of the Virgo Pisces axis um, on uh, September 18, 19. Uh, but uh, I really feel that the main shift for us is going to take place in summer because of the Capricornian double full moon, you know, like, so um, okay. this... Um, you know, starting the, just about starting the equinox, you know, the new astrological calendar, astrological year. And this, this uh, particular lunation we're looking at is the, uh, is the last one of the previous one. Uh, this is starting uh, the go ahead process. And in summer, we will see more, more of where is this taking us? Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, we should know we are gearing up for an intense, I mean, Aries can be quite intense, an intense spring um, and shift. And it'll be interesting to see what these eclipses will bring for us. Mm. It'll be very interesting to see. I think our saving grace is the fact that Mars will be in Pisces. Because if Mars yeah, was right. in Aries, <laughs> I think oh, that would be yeah. a different story. But Mars is in Pisces. Yeah. Well, so it's, you know, I think that they are definitely highlighting the closing of an error. Mm. And so, um, and then, you know, what their true meaning will be, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, you know, within six months it'll start to unfold and we'll we'll understand what what the particulars were about you know six months after these um eclipses or yeah when the next eclipses come in in the fall yeah yeah that will be the first one will be the spices literally the 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 full moon to this one and uh you know, the interesting fact about that is that that's uh, while Pluto is in Capricorn for the very last time and Neptune actually, uh, I believe, will be in a closing phase. I know Neptune will be part of it again. I think it will be on the other side. It will be on a closing closing side. So either way, it's going to be, um, yeah, definitely interesting to see 
uh, what will be illuminated at th that point, because this, of course, being a new moon is a seeding process. It's, it's just a um, conception of something. Yes. Well, beginning of something for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> it could be anything, you know. But I think one of the things that's really important that the backdrop to all of these um, inner planets is this Pluto through Aquarius. And Pluto and Aquarius, it's really, you know, confronting and transmuting this, this need to be, to individuate. And in order to do that, each of us has to step into our heart. This is the opposition point for or Pluto is Leo. And what that means to me is that we really just have to come to a place where, first of all, our hearts are open, that we can learn to find joy in what we're doing, figure out what we're doing, and just on the individual level, <clears throat> begin to step into that place. And as each of us does that and begins to find joy and step into that place of our true purpose, we'll be doing this whole Aries movement. And we're going to be doing this for the next 20 years. So I think it's really um, important. This is the beginning of that. This is what I think the seeding is about, is to really begin the process of discovering who we are and what it is that each of us is supposed to be doing while we're on this planet outside of the, you know, <clears throat> system that has been set up for us that is dissolving. Now we're having to come into a new one. So we're going to have to turn inward, you know, inward and discovery to discover who we are and what it is that we want to do with our time here. Yeah. And I absolutely agree because that's actually, um, and multiple things, but you know, like that's literally what I feel this Neptune uh, in a new face to Sun represents. Uh, but Sun, of course, is the ruler of Leo, so you know, this new moon, of course, being in Pisces, it's uh, that's what I really feel it represents. And to me, like, uh, you know, what I've been tapping into is really like this seeding, this unity consciousness, this oneness, but it's not from the human point of view, this human point of view of this organized and controlled and power hungry and make people feel like like animated objects right just like you know like something brainless senseless without a uh, soul without a purpose and I, I feel that that in a sense can be quite scary for some people because it's like well but this is something we know like this is how it works you know this is what is expected these are the choices we can play with so even though we are in a sense, you know, locked into the system that uh, created the boundaries that you can go from here to here, but not further than that, you know, and now we're breaking out of the this decentralization factor that our teacher brought to our attention with this Aquarius archetype. But uh, it literally is about, um, you know, breaking the thing to the bits so it can, like, you know, like when we were children and we had the kaleidoscope from this old tiny piece oh, yeah, of yeah. glass and every time you turn it, it becomes something completely different, but it's beautiful and it's very unique because all these things rearrange themselves. I feel it's like that, you know, yeah, that we're all beautiful. going to break apart to create something new and very beautiful that is unique and cannot be replicated because each and every single one of us has a unique soul signature. There is not another one as you and also each time we reincarnate, it's unique. We're never going to be exactly copy-paste on who we were before. Every time it's like the soul. Yes, the soul remembers, but we are always a new, unique expression of the source. That's why the sun is, is different, right? And, you know, like the sun, even Absolutely. when it squares the notes, you know, it doesn't, uh, it's, it's for this lifetime only because it's a unique expression of the source in this one body incarnation and stuff like that. So this is what I really feel that in one place, it can be very scary for people because in one sense, by getting back to oneness, we need to individuate. <laughs> like I know I it know. sounds so, I don't know how to describe it so it makes sense because with the Pisces, it's like we are all one, but we are all one in a way that is uh, lost, that we feel lost, we feel hopeless, we feel like we are not 
we don't have power, whereas now we're going really back to wholeness, but through empowered point of view, through this individual. Exactly. So it's like a paradox because we want to go back to oneness. We do want to be one, but not from the disempowered somebody else needs to tell me what to do point of view because just like you said before you know with this capricorn you know and the projection into reality we need to um we need to feel safe and secure within ourselves to be able to create right yes. so at the, uh, up until this point the external world was creating for us even though we were co-creating but subconsciously like you know we didn't understand what was going on because we felt like uh, we don't know who we are we don't know who we really are and we don't think we have the agency to do so so we need someone else to tell us what to do whereas this aquarian age is pushing us in the opposite direction it says no you need to know who you are so you create that unique expression so that a picture of the kaleidoscope can become together again but look differently be unique yes so this is literally the imagery that i'm getting from the spirit but i don't know how to put it in the words no that's perfect you're perfect i i i get it for sure it's and i think that this is this is the energy to me you're describing this south node and north node chiron conjunction we're going from this old way where we've kind of aligned ourselves outside of ourselves to be in this oneness to now we have to individuate into our own unique selves and that's the healing and 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 we will come together but as individuals and really with our with our own sense of um authority we we each you know we each have our own authority when once we reach adulthood we have our own authority we don't we don't need people to tell us what to do um so i've said that for such a long time but <laughs> don't tell me what to do <laughs> but this is what i also feel that will make people feel um because you see what what i'm getting into here and if people follow channelers when the energy gets channeled it's usually coming through as we as a collective consciousness However, each of these energies that are being channeled, they, they know their unique signature. They still be in a soul incarnate in a different shape and form, but there is a uniqueness to that particular. But so I feel that when we really know who we are, you know, and we feel safe and secure in ourselves, it's easy to come together because we didn't lose nothing of ourselves because then when we detangle ourselves again, we know who we are. So it's like much safer process of connection and disconnection because, uh, because we are whole, because we are whole and we know that we always come back to the whole, but we have our unique expression as well. So there is no this Scorpio, you know, I need to attach and I need to control you because otherwise I feel like I don't even know who I am, which is all coming back again from that, you know, lack, sense of luck and, you know, sense of like this uh, hierarchical system, but who is in charge, who is in charge. But uh, this is what I mean, this energy it's so different to what we used to. And I think that's why we're struggling to put it in a, in a words that we understand because the energy yes. is so different. It's so different from what we've it experienced. Is. And the whole point of it is that we are going to become truly uniquely our unique signature expression so we can become whole again and connect as a collective consciousness in a way that is not toxic and is actually equal because we are all equal because the red is not more important than blue or green they all have a space to play and there is uh, enough for everyone and and that's why we need to go through this process of purging and going through the extreme one way or another to find that middle point the spill still point and from that we can grow again so this i really feel that this chart represents the seeding of that you know of this of this new way of being this new way of existing but because there is so much um manifestation of the old ways you know the totality yes. of the pisces age is is fully fully remembered fully with us it's the totality we understand it the saturn is in pisces we understand the totality of the pisces age even though we can see it and we know it's toxic we still holding on to it because it helped us to survive and the soul remembers that yes but this is who we were and yes. i mean and that's great but but uh, and it was needed and it was necessary and it held a meaning but now this is not who we are becoming we becoming uh -huh. aquarius it's something completely yes. different and then when you get through pisces the idea with pisces is it's the ending and once you get to the ending you do have the totality of awareness of what it was about and so 
parts of us, I'm sure, just want to hold on to that because there's really fear in stepping into that something that's new. But the the universe is pushing us to do that. We're we're going to do it anyway. Um, and um, it it's a matter, like I said, it's just a matter of trust that it's going to be okay. And you know, kind of got to surrender to the process. This is this is the time we've been born into. This is the time we chose to come. <laughs> when this ex literally this exact time right now to really mm -hmm. begin and be able to participate in this seeding of this next you know phase of humanity so and i really feel that if people actually accept that if they if they can find the place in their heart and the connection to accepting that that well I must have chosen to be here otherwise I wouldn't be here and you know obviously I must have a purpose and you know I must be built uh, strong enough to uh, overcome whatever will be thrown at me and my way and stuff so when we actually accept that that okay well this is what's happening okay we're not going back to Pisces age you know like yes these all these doors are being shut in our face one after another so universe is saying there's a myriad of way to go but you can't go back you know we're not going that way exactly. then I feel like in a sense it creates a certain level of peace, you know, that, okay, well, that, that is, you know, it's like, it's, it's not trying to swim against this stream of water that, but I want to hold on to the past. Like when we actually go floppy and let it go and say, okay, well, uh, I'm, my ego might not like it because, you know, that's where the safety was. But if we accept that, okay, well, we cannot go back there, you know, and then, you know, like I know that majority of us, well, when we, when we are in a situation where we have to create something to survive or, you know, to think uh, anew, we, we will do it because that's what, how we wired. And sometimes we don't know how much we can do un until we push to do to to try our limits, you know, and then where we really discover what everything is hiding inside of us. And this is what I feel because, you know, like majority of people, as we keep mentioning, are not happy. Majority of people are not happy. You know, they're just surviving. Majority of people are not living. They're surviving, right? But it's what we know, right? So actually, when we look at the world and go like, okay, well, if there, well, we don't know what's coming. We don't know what it's going to look like. But, well, you know, to be honest, I don't think it can look much worse to what it's been in the past, you know, <laughs> right? many hundred years. So then we go like, okay, well, you know, we need to create it. We need to create it. So we have the uh, data, you know, the information gathering of the Pisces age. We, we know what we value. Okay, yeah, be kind to one another, but don't be people pleaser and don't let people abuse you and walk all over you. You know, there has to be boundaries. So we, yes. we take the gifts of the of the past and then we we transmute them or we, uh, you know, like uh, upgrade them into something different, something that actually is applicable to 21st century and Pluto in Aquarius, you know, because exactly. in a sense, like the educational system didn't change that much. But I mean, the world has changed so much. So we need to adjust. We need to adjust everything. And and it is, yeah, it, it requires work, of course, but uh, we build in a new world, you know, and it's uh, eventually it's going to look very different and it's going to create an opportunity for a very different experience. And yeah, uh, yeah. this is what we are. We are the builders of the new earth and this is what we sign up for. So, you know, we might as well make the most out of it. Yep. Yeah, and I think the experiences will, you know, they're just, things are going to unfold for us and we're going to have the opportunity to experience this uh, Mercury in in Aries. We're going to have that opportunity. Something new will, will pop up and we're going to have a, the opportunity to change our perspective. It, it'll likely be something shocking. Oh my gosh. Great. That happens, you know, <laughs> anything could happen. Um, but for sure, our perspective is going to change. And with that perspective change, our belief systems will change. And when our belief systems change, our values will change. And there we go. We're we're at that point in a new in a new realm. But you know, we're we're almost like in this phase where we're like, like I said in the beginning, we're at this place, we're like at the starting gates. It's all closing and the door isn't quite open to move into the next. So, so we're there's a lot of feels in this time period where we're like culminating and maybe it's a time a time where we're you know just allowing the processing of all of that what has come before so that 
you know, we can begin to get this new perspective of what's happened. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it just seems like, you know, we're, it's, and it's just, it's not going to be very much time, you know, just, it won't be long before it's all in Aries and, and then we'll know. <laughs> The horses will be out of the gate. <laughs> I really feel like we are in a birth canal. And, you know, yeah, like we are just coming right. close to the crown. <laughs> but you're not there yet. But literally, that's what that's I feel. That's exactly what it feels like. You know, <laughs> where the uh, gestation period is about over. And we are crowning. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. Without going too graphic into details, but it is a bloody process, you know. I mean, I mean it can be for sure, messy. for sure, definitely. But um, yeah, it's exciting, you know. New life, here we come. Exactly, new life. Yes. So, and I really hundred percent agree with what you said that you know when we actually surrender to the process, and there is so much help available. Like, I mean, the more we, people connect with their in the world and the spiritual essence of who they really are like i mean you know like without if you really believe what i've just said you know we are all oneness we are all part of the one so then of course you have a lot of help available you know like your spirit guides you know your ancestors like the source itself like we just need to open ourselves to receiving because the ego think i have to do it all on my own you know it's all up to me i have to do it all on my own you know and this is like again where we were being told that you are all the same but you are all separate but in a um, controlling way so people felt like i'm separate you know i like there is nobody who's gonna help me right but actually that is not the truth you know and this is the thing that when we open ourselves to the oneness and uh, reconnect with ourselves then we know that and and many people that can put it to practice the more that you are tuned in the more synchronicity serendipities you know things that you could have never even like even me yesterday you know i was like i told you i was having a bit of a low day you know i've been to dentist and i was feeling a little bit low and stuff and then literally i'm walking home and i'm thinking oh my god i could so do with petting a cat because i love cats and they always help me to shift my and there is a neighbor's cat that sometimes i pass and she wasn't there and i I was like oh, you know whatever and then literally just before i gone to my street there was a different cat and she was following me and then i literally just came to me that well it didn't look exactly what i expected it wasn't the cat i expected it wasn't where i expect to find it but there was a cat and then yeah. i was like literally looking in the sky like oh thank you universe and this is how fast thing can manifest. It's just a small thing, but I didn't know there was going to be, I mean, cats, you cannot predict cats, you know, but this is just one of the things that when, mm -hmm. when we actually co-create with the universe and trust, and we, you know, follow the, the thing that is the, the desire of your heart, you know, and it's not taking anything from anyone, you know, that actually things happen faster and smoothly, smoothly, and you don't have to, you don't have, it doesn't have to be so hard because absolutely because that's what we were being told to believe it has to be hard but it doesn't have to be hard no absolutely you know it's it's the things that you need it might not be what you want but <laughs> what you need will come for you and and if it's you know if you're having a terrible time and perhaps that's something that you need so that you can change a perspective or something you know it's it's really hard to uh, to even say because sometimes the negative things are actually what you need to move forward. Um, yeah, yeah. And Just so like, there's a surrender. Exactly. You know, you have, you have Just, to be able to surrender to what is and think as positively as you can. Um, do do some inner work. You know, try to. Uh, re-regulate your nervous system um a little yoga goes a long way <laughs> and meditation and a little meditation um yeah um you know knock off the caffeine a little bit maybe <laughs> and the screen time especially when it's uh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> involves social media <laughs> i hear that i hear that for sure but you see, this is exactly what we were talking about with our detox, you know, that sometimes you need to remove things from your life to uh, 
to appreciate the significance of them, you know, like to have like kind of like a reset, you know, reset of your relationship to the things that matter, like yourself, like your food, you know, like your body, you know, like your relationships and stuff. So, yes, yeah, so I 100 percent agree. And, uh, you know, so far, unfortunately, because of the lessons we are still integrating in a three dimensional level of polarity. Uh, a lot of that involves a challenging situation. I mean, of course, you know, self-imposed detox is not that challenging in comparison with other things. But this is where I always and I, you know, we also spoke about this. We need to understand the meaning and ask ourselves, why would my soul wants to have this experience? Because if I'm having this experience, there must be a meaning in that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be having it. Right. And that can completely help us to reshuffle, because if you actually and this is a well-known fact, if you ask yourself questions or write the questions down on a paper, the answer will come, even if it doesn't come the same moment, even though it might, the answer will come. You will figure Absolutely. it out. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so exciting times. I think we took this in so many multidimensional layers. I mean, we <laughs> did. The chart. But it's good. It's good. We, we, we definitely worked through it. This is and the astrology 2.0. <laughs> for sure. Yep, I love it. I love the way that this chart looks with all the planets at one end and then the south node at the opposite end. <laughs> and the Queen Kongs between the south node and Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Yeah. Yep. Those because old ways are causing crisis. Yeah, and we don't see. Because if we go to someone else to tell us, it's just going to be the same old story. So, of course, yeah. we don't see. Yeah. But that's coming to a close. Yeah. So yeah. next month. <laughs> next month. Yeah, literally. As we begin to step into this new way of being, those old ways are, are coming to an end. And I think we're literally going to be integrating this North Node in Aries. As all the other planets come across that, <laughs> everybody's going to file across that North Node in Chiron. So mm. Yeah, um, the, the last one will be Mars, and that will be in a, a middle and late March, which is exactly. literally right before the full moon in Sagittarius, the illumination of the story that we see it in and see it in December. And also it will be right after Jupiter moves into Gemini, because we have plenty of choices. We just have to pick one of you. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah. I think I think we maxed it out. All right. Well, I'm gonna turn take this chart off. There we are. Cool. We back. We back in the real yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Adrian, tell us what's new. Um, well, you know, I am working on my um website, still not up yet, but it's in the works. And um, you can uh, find me uh, at Substack, Jess Kieran Astrology. And um, I have a Facebook page, also Jess Kieran Astrology. And uh, I'm doing readings and you can reach out if you want to hear from me. Just hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. You can compare the notes on what's going on. <laughs> For real. Yeah, and I think it's perfect, as I said to you, that you're going to be launching your uh, your your website in the Aries season. It's perfect time for it. It is absolutely perfect. So it'll be a good thing. Awesome. And, yeah. Cool. And if anybody wants to connect with me, you just find me on social medias or on my website, moonlightsoul369.com. Uh, and uh, yeah. Thank you, Adrian, again for Thank getting together. So, so it's like, I think it's like a year of us doing this now, these donations. So we start in a brand new cycle from the eclipse. We are. Ooh, ooh. How will it evolve in the second year? Right. <laughs> cool. So I hope, guys, that you enjoy and you'll be here to, to, to see what happens. <laughs> for sure.
Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adrian, and see Thank you next you. time.